If you look good, you're probably going to feel good. When you meet designer David Washington, there is nothing shy of a profound statement being made. His sophisticated, swaggering style is not easily forgotten. Custom clothing is more than fashion. It's about distinguishing yourself, setting yourself apart, standing out with confidence on purpose. DW Designs Custom Clothier. We want to help you become one of the best dressed men around. I invited my fashion designer, David Washington, here to talk about trends for uh, this year coming up. And we're going to have you come on the show as we go along during the year and you update us on things. Today we're talking shirts, right? That's right. That's right. Today we're talking shirts. Um, one of the most prominent uh, fads right now, trends, I, I, sh I should say, are shirts. People are starting to now utilize shirts in a variety of ways. Right. Uh, one in particular is just dressy casual having the ability to wear it with a, a sport coat, shirt open, you know, open collar, with slacks on, all with jeans. So you don't have to go with the tie look all the time. And, so, and you can do this like in the business, in the business world as well? You can, absolutely, okay. absolutely. Shirts now have a personality of their own and now they're starting to accent shirts with pocket squares. That's a great accessory item uh, to enhance the look, your overall look, that is. It kind of takes away from not having the tie, it actually adds to it as far as the pocket squares are concerned. You said uh, you don't want to have two-tone shirts, you want to have a, a, a colored shirt like this. This is what we're kind of looking for here. Uh, it can be purples, it can be whatever color you want to use, right? That's exactly right. Ideally, you want to go with a, a tone-on-tone -tone shirt where, where the collar and cuffs are the same as the body of the shirt, and that maintains the consistency of the look. Okay, and let me ask you this, because I've always had this question asked about the pocket squares. Is there any particular way, can you put, is, can you put the pocket square in your, in your jacket any kind of way, or is there a specific way to do it? Actually, there are a variety of ways that you can uh, wear your pocket square. As you can see, what I currently have on, I have what's called four points, mm -hmm. uh, where four points are displayed. The mannequin, as you can see, is more of a squared off look where you see very little of the pocket square, just enough to accent the overall look. Right. And then there are a variety of other ways that you can wear it as well. Okay, so I just throw mine in there. There's the mannequin right there. I, sometimes I just try. I don't even have one on today. Uh, and that's, I know you're pretty hot at me about that, but uh, absolutely. We'll take care of that. I'll just take this one right here as well. Yeah. Yeah. Stop, <laughs> sir. Just stop. We don't get any kickback. You know, he's over there right. talking about how you keep him in line. Keep him in line. There you That's go. All right. You, you can get tips on men's wear from David by emailing him at dwashington at dwdesigns.biz or log on to your website, dwdesigns.biz. David, good to have you with us. This is this is trendy. It's hot. You don't have to wear a tie. You can wear a pocket square to make up for that. I like it. We'll be seeing you as we go along. Right? We look forward to it. David, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Just a few seconds ago, you couldn't see it. He was straightening up my pocket square. He said, I got to hook you up. That looks bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good to have you here. And we're going to specialize today on talking about care for shoes, which I think is hugely important for men uh, to really get used to and kind of get into like some type of balance about when you do it, when you don't do it. Let's, let's talk about this, the shoe thing. Well, one thing about shoe care, it's, it's very, very essential when you're investing in a nice pair of shoes. You want to make sure that you do the things necessary to maintain and preserve the life of your shoes. Mm -hmm. And what I have here is just... You got a whole lot of items over here. And I, you know, a lot of people don't know that you have this much stuff goes into shoe care. Absolutely, it surely does. And what we have here, just a few items that helps maintain and preserve uh, the life of your shoes. For example, one of the things that I often recommend is when you purchase a pair of shoes, go to a shoe repair shop and have taps put on the heel. Mm -hmm. These are taps that you can get out of the shoe store and what they do, they, ha they place them down at the bottom of the shoe and what the purpose of that is to maintain uh, the heel so that the heel doesn't run down over time. And what you do periodically is just inspect your heel and as it wears down, just have them replaced. They're, mm -hmm. they're very, very economical. Uh, a few dollars and, and you're off and running again. Well, you can't beat it. Now, I've seen people put it on the, on the bottom of the heel, like here. I've, I've got some on mine. I've seen some. Do they put it on the toe as well? That's right. They, you also have that option. It all depends on the type of shoe. If it's a shoe that, uh, and depending on how you, how you walk in your shoes, if you're 
tending to, to walk with your foot forward, uh, then it's essential to go ahead and have smaller taps put at the tip okay. to preserve the front and, and minimize it for the sole from wearing down. It's all about making the shoe last uh, a little bit longer. Uh, Absolutely. Maybe a whole lot longer. All right. Now, what about what, what else you got here? We also have polish. Polish here is very, very, very important because one thing about your polish, it helps preserves the leather. Uh, it helps when you're dealing with inclement weather, uh, rain, sleet, and things of that nature. You have the ability uh, with properly polishing your shoes to preserve the leather, thus extending the life of your leather as well. Okay. And what you got here? This is called a shoe tree. This is a shoe tree, a cedar shoe tree. And I strongly, strongly recommend this as well. Cedar, because I've seen other ones that are plastic or whatever the case may be. But why cedar? Cedar, because of cedar, because of the wood, cedar, it, it has the ability of w withdrawing moisture from your shoe. Oh, okay. So if you're wearing your shoes throughout the day and once you get in for the evening, uh, it's also important that you take your shoe tree and place it uh, in your shoe. And what it does over a couple of hours, it pulls the moisture out of the leather, thus preserving the leather and also extending uh, the, the shoe so that it minimizes the, the cracks in the leather over time. Oh. So shoe trees, particularly cedar shoe trees, are essential. Absolutely. Okay, I got to get some of those. And that, yes. not too expensive either, right? Not expensive at all. All great tips. Nobody likes to see a well-dressed man or in bad shoes, right? That's right. All right, tell them where they can uh, talk to you about different things. If you have any questions, you can feel free to go to my website. It's www.dwdesigns.biz. That's B as in boy, I as in ice cream, Z as in zebra. DWDesigns.biz. All right, David, always a pleasure to have you here. Pleasure is mine. Looking sharp as always. Thank you. Good. You feel good. Part of looking good is taking care of your wardrobe. Designer David Washington is here with uh, some important advice on taking care of what's in your closet. David, always good to have you here. And, uh, you know, last time we talked about shoe care and how important that was. Now you got the wardrobe. Let's go to work. Well, one thing I, I really want to share with the audience to, this evening is the importance of really, really taking preventive steps and maintaining your wardrobe. Yeah, you're putting a lot of money into this. You want to make sure that it lasts as long as possible, right? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. And one common thing I've noticed over the years are issues dealing with moths. Uh, a lot of times you may run into a situation uh, where moths may invade your closet and you'll find little nicks in, in your, your jacket or your sweater and you wonder where did it come from. Right. Well, a lot of times it comes from moths and, and the thing that's pretty interesting about moths they, they tend to feed off of this protein called keratin. Okay. And keratin is a protein that's found in wool, silk, uh, linen, uh, cashmere. Wow. And what they do, they, they're... Some expensive uh, materials right there. Absolutely. Like cashmere, yes. Absolutely. Virtually, they're virtually impossible, uh, invisible, I should say. You don't see them. They tend to party at night. When you turn the lights off in your closet, huh. that's when, they, when they're out and about. And these are some items here. Uh, that works really well in terms of eradicating the issue, okay. uh, minimizing the existence of moths, okay. uh, and it's cedar, cedar and lavender, cedar. You talked about cedar before the shoes, so cedar is really a, a really good product here. It right? is. Okay. It is for for a number of reasons. Um, cedar, again, as I mentioned in the last segment, it, it, it does a, an excellent job in terms of minimizing moisture, uh, which. That tends to be one of the things that moths gravitate toward, okay. moisture. Uh, so it does a great job of that. Also, moths aren't really fond of the scent of cedar. Mm -hmm. So what I t typically encourage uh, a number of clients to make sure you, you lay cedar throughout your closet. Wow. And these are some of the items here that I strongly, let strongly say, recommend. I, I, let me just say I have no cedar in my closet whatsoever. This is, this is scary. I'm going to wake up with nightmares and I'm trying to get some cedar. <laughs> it's, it's important. Now tell me the difference in cost between cedar and what may be a, just a regular wire hanger or whatever. It, it, it's, it's worth it, correct? It is. It is. And what I have here are just some different cedar products that okay. you can use in a very uh, very inexpensive here. This is a value pack here, as you can see, of different types of cedar. Okay. Cedar blocks, which are ideal to place on your sweaters, in your drawers, okay. and all, and it helps with that. And one thing about cedar, it typically lasts six to 12 months, okay. uh, cedar blocks. And once 
uh, six or 12 months have expired, you can simply just kind of sand the top layer of the cedar, right. and then it gives another six months or so of life. So right. it prolongs the longevity of cedar. Um, this is another, cedar hangers, which are also ideal. And you notice right. I have a cedar ring, which is located at the top okay. of the hanger. This is something that you can also buy uh, and put on the top of your hanger, and it does an excellent job, again, keeping moths away from your wardrobe. Oh, wow. and you, and quickly, the tides, you can do the same thing with those? Same thing. As I mentioned, they tend to feed off of silk. Ties, for the most part, are silk, uh, made of silk. Mm -hmm. So we have this cedar rod here, which holds about 40 different ties. Wow. Okay? okay. And you can just put it right here, and because of the scent of the cedar with the lavender, right. again, that's not their best friend. So they stay away. They tend to stay away. David, all great tips. I'm going out and get some cedar tomorrow. I'm telling you right now. I'm, I'm doing it this time. I appreciate you always coming by here and giving us some great tips. We look forward to seeing you again here soon. Look forward to it. All right. Washington is here, and uh, we always invite you to come on and let the fellas out there know how they can look dapper, a little bit more dapper. Most of them are already dapper, just a little bit more dapper, right? That's right. Uh, from the times you've been on the show, I've learned the biggest thing I've learned, I've learned a lot of things, but cedar hangers are the best thing going, right, for, for your shirts and for your, for your suits, correct? That's correct. All right. That's now, correct. now, tonight you're going to be talking about the proper shirt collar for your facial shape. And when I heard this, when I heard that was going to be your topic, and I was like, what? I feel like Scooby-Doo. I didn't know that was going on. What's going on? Tell us. Yeah, you know it's interesting because uh, there there's five there are five different facial shapes for men, mm -hmm. uh, starting with rounded. Then you have the diamond shape. You also have the square shape. Okay. Uh, you have an oblong and also an oval shape. Wow. So okay. those are five shapes, and based upon those shapes, kind of determine which collar styles are most you know, better suited, I should say, for the individual based upon their facial shape. Okay, so let's go. Let's uh, let's uh, start with. Uh, let's use me. Uh, my my dance partner Dorinka told me that, which you know. She told me the other day. She said, "I really don't like that tab collar thing." She kind of reached up and said, "What? Why do you do that?" I'm like, "Huh? I've been wearing tab collars all for like the last ten years here on WBTV." Is this a good look, or should they, should that be doing something different? No, well, you know, you've nailed it. You've nailed it um, because you have more of what's called an oblong or a square face okay. shape. All okay, right. so typically your jawline and your cheekbone is more of a squared shape. Right. So in order to minimize that and kind of give you more balance, it's recommended that you go with a collar style that has a uh, narrower spread. As you can see, narrower spread or tab collar is what you, you have mm -hmm. on currently. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the narrow spreads may be something along this line. Let's take or, it back out there. You go. Mm -hmm. Or even you're saying right this one right yep, here. This okay. is this is a narrow collar spread, okay. which is most appropriate for your okay. collar style. All right. Or or the traditional collar style, which is a medium to narrow spread. Okay. Okay. So this is my stuff right here. These two right here is what I should wear more of, and including the tab collar. It's not a bad look. Okay. No, it's good. not a bad look because if you were to go with a wider spread as shown here, mm -hmm. medium curved spread or a wide That's spread, a really that wide would, name. exactly, that would widen you even more. And what we want to do is kind of get, give you more balance, more, more proportion, okay. exactly. All right. Now tell us about your facial, for people that might have your facial shape. I have what's called an oval shape. And an oval shape is a shape that allows you to pretty much have free reign as to what you want to wear. You, I can go with more of a wider spread, collar. Uh, a widespread collar is what I have on right now, mm -hmm. or I can go with a medium spread, curved spread like this, or even a traditional style. Okay. So I'm kind of in between oval and oblong. Okay. All mm -hmm. right. And so other people that may have a different, how can they find out this information? You know, you can go, you simply go online. Uh, you can go online and just pull up facial shapes for men. Mm -hmm. Uh, or you can even take, you can go in front of a, a mirror and just kind of draw a circle, just kind of get close to a mirror and draw a circle of your face in the mirror. Wow. And from okay. there, you can kind of extract what your facial shape is based upon the different definitions of the styles I've indicated. Okay, and they can also uh, contact you uh, by going to your website, dwdesigns.biz, 
And uh, any other information tonight? We, we covered it all? I, I think we've covered it for this evening. So just make sure that you deal with someone that's quite educated or well-versed in terms of making your shirt selection so that you can make the appropriate selection for your facial shape. All right, David, thank you. probably going to feel good. David Washington, my designer, is, is back to give us another lesson on choosing a menswear. Uh, you can get advice on menswear from David anytime. We're going to talk about that in just a second, but let me tell you right here. What do we got here, David? Well, <clears throat> what I wanted to do today was just make you know, something really, really clear to the gentleman in terms of understanding versatility in sport coats. Okay. Because uh, I don't wear a lot of sports coats. I, you know, I just do basically suits. That's right. Okay. That's but right. But you're going to tell me I need to do some sports coats. Well, right? I think it's a great addition to your wardrobe. It enables you to do a number of different things from dressing it up as well as dressing it down. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing when looking for a nice sport coat, you want to look for something that lends versatility. Okay. Uh, it's very, very functional, allows you to do a number of different things with it. Okay. For example, as we have here, you notice this jacket here. This is a cream and navy uh, and also a medium blue content See, in terms I'm of color its fabrication. Blind. I would have said purple. I, said, <laughs> I just would have said purple. I, but you said it's cream and blue. That's but right. Brigitte said that's why I have a designer. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, David. See, the thing I love about this, as you notice right here, we're, sh we're accenting this sport coat with a navy pair of, bla a navy pair of slacks. Uh, excuse me, but then look at the alternate slacks that we can also integrate to totally change the look. This is medium blue. Mm -hmm. Going with medium blue, uh, along with this tan shirt and this tie, change the look totally. And then now that it's spring and summer, right. you can kind of lighten it up a little bit by now adding this. See, see I, would never, I would get it up a little bit higher. See, I would never do the white, the, 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 the this a cream pan, right? That's right. That's a cream pan. I would never do that. Uh, along with a blue shirt, lighter blue shirt right? to go with it, okay. change the pocket square to the lighter blue, and now you have a totally different look with the same blazer. I, I like that. So you know who would look good in this? Jadavion Clowney from South Carolina. He just was uh, selected number one overall to the Houston, Texas in the night's NFL draft. He I may want to come that. see you and get something like this. So awesome. This is good. I like the fact that you can actually have, and that's what a, a lot of women like to do too, right? They like to have uh, something they can wear and exchange and give a different look without having to go buy a whole lot of clothes. This is what you can do with the men. You're, a, you're exactly right. We're talking about extending your wardrobe, utilizing what you have, getting the most out of what you have. All right, so I may get a, I may get a sports coat. You may talk me into that. I, I don't know. Let's do it. Dave. Okay, all right. <laughs> you can get in contact with David by emailing him at dwashington at dwdesigns.biz or log on to his website, dwdesigns.biz there. Washington, my fashion designer, is, has stopped by to give us some uh, tips on what to wear and how to look good. Go ahead, David. What you got for us tonight? Well, this evening we're talking about pleated versus non-pleated trousers. Okay. Uh, oftentimes, as a clothier, I'm, all, I'm often asked, uh, what type of pants style best suits my body type right uh, as from a client and a lot of people don't think about that for pants they think about it for like shirts as far as the neck is concerned but as far as pants they don't think about that right you're exactly yeah. right you're exactly right and one thing pleated pants offers is room it offers room uh, particularly those that are pretty heavy in the midsection area or heavy thighs uh, I oftentimes <laughs> recommend. <laughs> I, I hate often, to say it, David, but I got a little bit around. Yeah, a little, little, little bit around this. Yeah. But I strongly recommend to to kind of disguise that and to kind of give you a little more balance from your upper body versus your lower uh, are pleated pants mm -hmm. because it offers that the room, the comfort, uh, and it also offers style. Okay. As you can see right here, there are multiple different styles of pleated trousers that you could take advantage of. Mm -hmm. uh, one right here is just a traditional pleat. As you can see, where the pleat opens toward the pocket okay. of the pant. Right. There are also other pleat, pleated styles that are inverted or reversed, so where the opens pleat opens the... up toward the fly of the pant. Okay. Okay. I don't know. I've ever seen that before. That's yes, pretty cool. Yes, reverse okay. pleat. It's pretty pretty neat look. So it offers... Uh, a d variety of styles. Now, who should wear a reverse pleat? What was the difference between wearing a reverse pleat and the one that's coming towards the pocket? Well, a, a slender build 
silhouette. Mm -hmm. I often recommend that because it still gives style, it gives room in that area, but it complements a slimmer physique. Okay. Okay. Well, and then here we have an, a box inverted pleats, as you can see, okay. where the pleats are open inwardly. Okay. All right. Another a different style, as you can see, inverted box pleats. All that right. we have. Okay. And, and one more, you can real quick. Uh, we got to run out of full okay. time there. And here ahead. you have the flat front. Okay. Flat front. That's also a, 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 a trouser that I recommend for someone that's slender build. Okay. Uh, it gives you a really modern, uh, contemporary look, okay. the flat front look. The flat front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out a little bit in the next couple of weeks, and I'm going to wear a flat front next time you come over here. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, David, always a pleasure. Always. How can people get to get to information from you? Uh, feel free to go to my website, www.dwdesigns.biz, B-I-Z, dwdesigns.biz. All right, David, always a pleasure to have you here. Pleasure Looking sharp mine. as always. expert David Washington to talk about what you should wear at formal events so he's back with us tonight uh, thanks for coming here we appreciate it's a pleasure being here all right uh, what's one of the first things that men need to know about formal wear and etiquette well one thing you know I can truly truly say about black tie or formal that's the highest level of dress can't formal. go any higher than that can't go any higher yeah. which in, which entails a tuxedo and what I have here are two illustrations of this different styles of tuxedos that, that's very, very important for you to understand when you receive an invitation to a gala, to a ceremonial event, mm -hmm. when it says black tie, black tie simply means that. Okay. Black tie, tuxedo. And what are some of the characteristics of a tuxedo? As you can see here, all tuxedos have satin lapels. Mm -hmm. Uh, which denotes formality. Right. You notice that there's satin uh -oh. okay. lapel gotcha. there, and then gotcha. you also have uh, the, the uh, shawl lapel. Okay. This is one lapel style, and then you also have a notch lapel. Okay. And then there's so wait, another. So you see, and the former wear always has to have the, the satin. Yes. And satin has. Okay. I didn't yes. know that. Satin okay. really, really don denotes formality. Okay. So you want to make sure you have uh, a tuxedo that has satin lapels, okay. uh, satin buttons, as illustrated here. All right. Uh, and there are various styles of tuxedos. Okay. okay? What we have when it says black tie, uh, which simply means that your tuxedo has to have a tie that rep that's black. Okay. That's what black ties. Black means. definitely. You have, you have to. Well, we, get, we got a red tie here. Okay. Right? That's 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 a good question. Okay. And and what that represents is there are invitations that are sent out sometimes may say festive attire or creative attire. Okay. Which simply means tuxedo, but you have the ability of incorporating your style, your Ooh, color in terms okay. of accessories. Right. If you want to highlight a different color tie. That gives you the opportunity to be more creative oh. in your formal look. Oh, okay. If the invitation states that. State that says festive, festive attire. Festive or creative okay. attire. All right, good deal. Okay. What's the biggest? What's the biggest mistake that people? Because you know, we we got the, the bow ties, obviously. Do you have to have a bow tie when it comes to black tie, or can you have? I see at the Oscars, you see some of the, you know, Brad Pitt maybe wearing a, a black long tie, a regular necktie. Can you do that too? You can do that too. Okay. So you can go with a regular necktie, black. Uh, or you can go with a bow tie, if so you have festive. that option. It, it, no, if it's black tie. Okay, all right. Black tie, as long as it's black tie. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, when you when you look at, as you note here, you notice that the pocket square uh, is a different color pocket square, which enables you again right. to be more creative when it states that you have that option based upon the invitation. Black tie, you go with the satin, and you got to have black tie or bow tie, or mm -hmm. whatever you got. Okay, good deal. I think David, thanks for being here as always. If you looking good. Yeah, we should say that, right? He, he, he stops by every month to talk about style. We've gone over cedar hangers before. We've talked about uh, 
pocket squares. We've done a little bit of that. What do you have for us tonight? Still uh, keeping with the formal uh, arena, we're going to talk about the white dinner jacket tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. The white dinner jacket. I don't, I don't think I've ever worn a white dinner jacket before. Tell me why I should. Go, go ahead. Well, first of all, let's talk about the origin of the white dinner jacket. It started during the Depression era, mm -hmm. uh, the mid-30s, 40s. And during that time, uh, it was mostly geared toward the affluent, to the wealthy, those that traveled quite a bit during that era. Okay. And typically when they would take cruises to, uh, you know, they would travel to warmer climate areas, you know, tropical regions. And because they wanted to still maintain the formal look, the dinner jacket, the white dinner jacket that is, it's a lighter weight, okay, okay yes. still maintains the formal look, if you will, mm -hmm. but then it enab enables an individual to still have that very, very pristine look, be formal, but yet be cooler okay. because of the lighter weight. Okay, all right. Oh, now, how do you... How do you care for something like this? I was talking to Brigitte earlier, and I said to you, have you have been out with somebody that's worn that before? And she said, I don't think so, because I can see somebody getting something on as far as, like, makeup or something like that. How, how do you care for this? Carefully. Okay. Very carefully. <laughs> <All right. laughs> First of all, but it's, it's, it's an awesome look. It's, 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 it's a great look because of just it offers versatility in the formal world it allows you still to be somewhat creative uh, but still maintaining that very very formal look uh, a lot of times when you're traveling particularly taking cruises when formal wear is recommended a lot of times the white dinner jacket is preferred okay and I would imagine that just by looking at it right here you can pretty much accessorize that with anything as compared to a, a black jacket uh, where maybe have the colors like you put red on that black may not uh, be so complementary to red mm -hmm. but you put red on that uh, green any kind of colors would be great for that right? yeah one thing about this particular look right here it enables you to have a great deal of flexibility mm -hmm. you know in terms of the look so it enables you the ability to kind of you know go outside of the box be more creative uh, in your look yet still be formal it's, it's basically stylish too uh, you know, there's a lot of people would it be say it's more European than it is uh, American uh, to be seen in a white dinner jacket because you see a lot of the different movies the European movies that they, they have like uh, scenes with them in the white dinner jacket it's interesting you mentioned that because during the, the, the depression area Humphrey Bogart was very instrumental in the introduction of the white dinner oh, okay. jacket. How about so, that? So, yeah. Yeah, so that is true. All right, good deal, David. Uh, we've been uh, going through so many different styles and things. So you got to get that up on your website. Tell everybody where to go to check out your website. You're going to have all those up at some point, right? Absolutely. Okay. My website is www.dwdesigns.biz. Again, www.dwdesigns.biz. David, thanks a lot for being here. Appreciate it. Always a pleasure. All right. Thanks.